Okay, so finished soldering all the electrolytic caps and the other hardware onto the board. Now normally the capacitors that are in the signal path are film capacitors. They're the WEMA capacitors. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I'm going to make a slight substitution. I'm going to substitute the, uh, the sold and fast caps uh, in the signal path. Uh, I don't know if it's going to make any difference in the sound. Uh, just kind of doing it to be a little bit different. Um, so, see what happens. However, before we put the signal path capacitors in, we're going to put the tube sockets in. Make sure they're in the right orientation. Sit as flush as possible. There we go. Okay, the tube sockets are in. Like I said, you do have to use a little, quite a bit of solder. You want the entire the entire pass through filled. I'm not even going to check those for continuity. There's no way that they're not making a good connection. Okay, on to the capacitors that are in the signal path. Hey guys, welcome back to the preamp build. It's been a few days since I've had a chance to work on it, but the kids are sleeping. I've got a couple hours, so uh, let's get back into it. Um, this is where we stand. All the capacitors, the tube sockets, uh, a lot of the miscellaneous hardware is uh, is soldered on. There's a few more pieces to, uh, to work on, um, but kind of getting annoyed with soldering right now so I'm going to switch gears uh, and start uh, working on the the case. A couple things that I have uh, done a little bit differently than the uh, the manual uh, on the voltage regulators instead of lying them down flat on the on the surface of the board I've left them standing up and I've attached uh, heat sinks to them they get warm uh, and I just feel more comfortable with them uh, standing off the board and with a small heat sink on them to help dissipate the heat. I've installed all the Solden uh, signal path capacitors so they're in place ready to go. I still have a couple more on this side to do but again that'll be done uh, at a later time. So 
this board has a number of components that solder directly to the PCB and then protrude out the back of the case. There are two pairs of RCA uh, connections, one output and one moving magnet input. There's a selector switch, power uh, connector which isn't here, and the uh, grounding uh, connection. Now the problem is it's going to be impossible to drill these holes through the case in the exact spot uh, that they need to be. So rather than this, I'm going to um, simply drill the holes for each pair and then run wires from the connectors onto the PCB. For the moving coil inputs, the instructions uh, are to use these uh, individual RCA plugs. Uh, and if I had thought ahead a little bit, I would have ordered uh, six pairs of these instead of four pairs of the PCB mounted uh, RCAs. Um, but again, the plan is just to mount these directly to the case and run wires to the PCB. So we'll see how that, uh, how that works out. Okay, so time to solder the last of the components on the board. This one I ended up with for the case. There is on the front panel just on off switch and two LEDs. This board will uh, wait approximately 30 seconds before it turns the outputs on. So you have a power LED and uh, an output LED. On the back, moving magnet and moving coil inputs and the selector switch. Uh, the ground plug and then I'm gonna wait to put the uh, output uh, RCA jacks in they're just these uh, little guys I'll put those in at the end after I get the board positioned and see where uh, where the best best place for them is but uh, yeah so solder a few more components on and then the board is all finished
Okay, so assembly's all done. That's what we ended up with. Next step is to power it up, adjust the voltages uh, with the pots, and test the moving magnet, moving coil inputs, make sure we're getting signal at the output. Lastly, we're going to hook it up and hear how it sounds. Alright, see you next time.